Hey guys, so um, today I have a special video to make. So tonight I was sitting around playing Street Fighter V and I was just thinking, you know, we still don't have direct input support and f for people who don't understand what that means, um, basically if you have an arcade stick that is not one of very few sticks or a stick that's supported on Xbox 360 through X input, your stick does not work on Street Fighter V for the PC. Um, this has kind of been a problem, especially because those same 360 sticks that work on PC don't work on PS4. Um, for me personally, that meant that I was practicing on my 360 stick right here, but then when it came time for tournament, we played tournament on PS4, so I would have to play on my VLX stick, which does not work on my PC with Street Fighter. So I was just wondering, how long would it take me to, from scratch, attempt to add direct input support in the game? So um, five hours ago, I made a tweet. I spent some time reading up on exactly how complicated it would be. And I've been working on this thing I'm about to show you guys for about three hours, I think. And most of that time was spent fighting with compilers and, and stuff. It's been a while coded in C++, but I threw my hat in there to do this. Um, and here's so I guess four, four here. Got the the analog joystick working. Uh, I've got the, the features that use the triggers working. Those are working fine. Um, the, the training mode features where you push in the sticks, those are working fine and all the buttons work. But um, I was thinking now that I'm doing this, um, there's a couple other features that are very easy to implement that I could implement that could help out some people who do want to run the PC version at local get-togethers and things like that. Um, also, for users that play on keyboard, um, there's a kind of neat feature that I'm planning to implement that may be useful to you guys. So um, right now, if you have just one stick and one person playing on keyboard, you can't play. And the reason you can't play is because player one will be keyboard, but then the first X input controller ends up being player one as well. So if you have a, a friend who plays on a keyboard, you'd actually have to plug in a controller, just kind of like leave it on your desk in order to play two player with just um, him playing on keyboard. Um, that's something I want to implement. I'm just not sure the best way to to have you activate features while the game is on. I mean, right now it's probably looking at keyboard shortcuts, but I'm also thinking of using some of the, the buttons that you don't normally press on a controller to activate some of the stuff. Another thing is um, if you are player two and let's say you want to set and player one unplugs this controller and walks away, right now there's no way for you to move the menu after a match is over. So if you want to go back to character select or go back to a different mode, you can't really do that. So um, one feature I wanted to add in is the ability to say hold down the back button for a couple of thing I'm thinking of implementing is a another shortcut something like that where you hold the back button for a certain amount of time and then input other buttons to switch player one and two's controls um just in case you just wanted to do, you know claim player one after someone unplugs their controller until the next person comes up you could be player one and go into training mode without having to replug your controller which is what you have to do right now um I'm planning on implementing hot swapping controllers even for direct input. That might be something where you plug in a controller and it has to, um, there might be some other kind of keyboard thing that you might have to hit because otherwise I have to check for controllers over and over and over again to see if any new ones are plugged in. But um, yeah, this didn't take nearly as long as I thought. Uh, I learned a lot about how 
X input and direct input work. Um, I learned about making a proxy library that replaces another DLL file and kind of intercepts everything that goes through it. That was kind of fun. Um, but yeah, I think if there's demand for this and if you guys have any feature requests or anything like that, just let me know. And probably we'll take a break from working on this for a while until I hear back from some people. But yeah, this is pretty good to me. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.